Hello, I'm Kevin Houston, and I want to talk to you today about mathematical induction. So, induction is applied when we have an infinite number of statements indexed by the natural numbers. So, for example, take the statement 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5 for all n in the natural numbers. Uh, so, if we took n is 1,000, then 6 to the power 1,000 minus 1 is divisible by 5. Now, this might appear a bit surprising. Now, it's not sufficient to prove this for a sample of natural numbers, whether that sample involves hundreds, millions, or even billions of numbers. We have to prove it for all n. Uh, also, taking a very high number, such as 1,000, won't do it. So, induction is like domino topping. This is where the dominoes are stood on their ends in such a way that when you push the first one over, it knocks a second domino over, that in turn knocks down the third, and so on. Provided all the dominoes are arranged so that each knocks down the next one, then all of them will fall. The process of induction is similar. We prove that if the kth statement is true, then the k plus one-th statement is true, i.e. the truth of one statement implies the truth of the next. This is analogous to one domino knocking down the next one. So the first statement is true, push the first domino, then all the statements are true, all the dominoes get knocked down. Here we have a number of dominoes all lined up, so that if one of them were to fall over, it would knock the next one down, and they're all like that. If I was to take some domino at random, like this one for instance, if this falls over, it will knock the next one down. And they're all set up like that, so that if I push the first one, then they will all go down, like so. Let's begin to make this idea precise. First, the principle of mathematical induction requires that we have a sequence of statements indexed by the natural numbers, and there are plenty of these. So, for example, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on, all the way up to n minus 1 plus n, and that's equal to 1 half of n times n plus 1 for all natural numbers. So the n is indexed uh, this particular statement. Uh, we'll, we'll actually see that this statement's uh, proved in, in a few minutes. And the second example is the inequality 2 to the power n minus 1 is less than or equal to n factorial. Uh, n factorial just means we take all the numbers from 1 to n and multiply them together. So here the index is, is n and it's, the statement is the inequality 2 to the power n minus 1 less than or equal to n factorial. Now we need to define our notation. We will use the notation a brackets n close brackets to denote the statement for a particular n. We'll call this a n. So for example, the statement 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5 for all n in the natural numbers. Well, a3 is just going to be 6 to the power 3 minus 1 is divisible by 5. Uh, and another example, of course, is 6 to the power 1,000 minus 1. That would be uh, a1,000. OK, now let's do the big theorem the principle of mathematical induction. So we start off with let a n be an infinite collection of statements with n in the natural numbers. Suppose that, first of all, a1 is true, i.e. the first statement is true. And secondly, assume that a k implies that a k plus 1 is true for all k in the natural numbers. Then the conclusion is that a n is true for all n in the natural numbers. The first condition is called the initial case, or step. The second condition is the inductive step. Uh, assuming that a k is true for some k is called the inductive hypothesis. We'll see these in a minute. OK, let's see the principle in action. Our first example is a real classic of mathematics. What is the sum of the first n numbers? Um, I'll need some notation for this, so I'll use the sigma notation. Uh, this sigma, this funny zigzag symbol, uh, should be quite common to you if you're doing A-level. Uh, and what it's saying is that sigma from i equals 1 up to n, we can say this as the sum from i equals 1 up to n of i, is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n minus 1 plus n. Another example, if we wanted to sum up the first squares, or the first n squares, um, 
then we take i squared and we take the, the sum from i equals 1 up to n of i squared and that will be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n squared and we just sum them all together. So that sigma notation just means summation. Right, we shall prove this statement that the sum of the first n numbers is actually equal to 1 half n times n plus 1. Okay, and this works for all n in the natural numbers. The statement is indexed by n, so we'll call a n the statement uh, sum of i equals 1 up to n of i, and that's equal to 1 half of n times n plus 1. So that's our statement a n. We want to show that this is true for each n. Let's check the first condition of the theorem, the initial case. That is, we want to show that a1 is true. This is particularly easy. When n equals 1, then the sum of i equals 1 up to n is the sum of i equals 1 up to 1. And so we're just summing the first 1 numbers. That's taking the sum of 1. So the uh, initial case here is that on the left-hand side of the equation, we've got 1. What about on the right-hand side? We want 1 half of n times n plus 1, and that's equal to 1 half times 1, because n is 1, and then we multiply that by n plus 1, so that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we can see quite clearly that's also equal to 1. So we've shown that the left and the right-hand sides of the equation we're interested in are actually equal. So A1 is true. Okay, so as you can see there, we've got the... Uh, equation being true, but only true for, or rather we've only checked it true for n equals 1. Now we need to do, do the inductive step. ak implies ak plus 1. Okay, so we want to show that if the statement ak is true, then ak plus 1 is true. So let's assume that ak is true for some arbitrary k. So we could have k equals 10, k equals 50, or k equals 22 billion. But this is a single k, the point is that it's arbitrary. We make no assumptions for any other n, just this particular k. So we're assuming that the sum from i equals 1 to k is equal to 1 half of k times k plus 1. Okay, first we write down the form of a k plus 1. This will help us, to guide us to where we're going to in the uh, example. So the sum of from i equals 1 up to k plus 1 of i is 1 half times, and now what we'll do is replace the n by k plus 1, so we get 1 half of k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. So at the end, we should be able to get that that summation on the left-hand side is equal to 1 half of k plus 1 times k plus 2. Okay, how would a mathematician prove such an equality? Mathematicians know that they should take the most complicated side of an expression and then reduce it to the other side. We don't start off by assuming the equation and then working our way down and boiling that down into something which turns out to be true. That can lead you astray. So what we should do is take the complicated side, reduce it down to something else, and so we get the, the right-hand side that we're after. Okay, so in a proof by induction uh, involving a sum, the complicated side is usually the one with the summation. So, in our left-hand side, we have the summation of i from i equals 1 up to k plus 1, and that's equal to the summation from i equals 1 up to k, uh, plus the last one, the, the k plus 1. Okay? So what we've done, we've split off the summation i equals 1 up to k. Now we know, or rather we're assuming, that this is actually equal to 1 half of k times k plus 1. This is the inductive hypothesis. So we'll replace that summation, i equals 1 up to k, with that uh, expression, 1 half of k times k plus 1. Okay, now all we need to do is do a bit of manipulation, and uh, in this particular case, we'll notice that we've got uh, two k plus 1s in there, in the, in the expression, so we'll try and factor those out. And if we factor out, we'll find that we've got 1 half times k plus 1 times k plus 1. Now, this is almost what we're after, because if we uh, rearrange that, we get 1 half of k plus 2 times k plus 1. And this was actually equal to the ha 1 half of k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1, which is what we were after. So you can see on the left-hand side, we've got the summation from i equals 1 up to k plus 1. And on the right-hand side, we've got 1 half times k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1.
Thus, we have shown that if the summation from i equals 1 to k is equal to 1 half of k times k plus 1 is true, i.e. a k is true, then the summation from i equals 1 up to k plus 1 is equal to 1 half k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 is true. All right? In other words, we have shown that all the dominoes are lined up so that if the, a, if the kth falls, then the k plus 1th falls. Thus, by the principle of mathematical induction, the statement is true for all n in the natural numbers. Okay, let's have a few remarks. Remark number one, let's note the structure. We assume that a k is true for an arbitrary k. We tease apart the a k plus one case so that a k can be used. We don't assume that the a k plus one case is also true. This is a common error made by beginners. We show that it is true when a k is true. Remark number two, another problem for novice mathematicians is that induction seems to violate the principle that we should not assume what we are trying to prove. It should be noted that the statement we wish to prove is about something holding for all n. In our assumption, in condition two, we assume that the statement holds for one particular n, which we call k. OK, that one particular n is arbitrary, is absolutely any n you like, but it's still just one by itself, no other assumptions made. It is vital to grasp this subtlety if induction is to be applied confidently.